too far, too far. Desk setups are some of my favorite videos to make on YouTube, especially when they're focused around the iPad. But this year, instead of focusing on my desk setup, which is really set up as a video editor because that's primarily what I do, I wanted to focus on a desk setup that is for iPad users and the way iPad users can push their desk setups with iPad OS 16. This is the iPad Maximalist Desk Setup. And this video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. So instead of focusing on my custom built desk that I've used in the past for desk setup videos, this year I wanted to focus on a desk that you all could go out and pick up if you wanted. This is the FlexiSpot E7. Like I mentioned, FlexiSpot sponsored this video. This is actually the top part. I still have to put the desk together. But what I like about this is I wanted something that was a sit-stand desk that had dual motors and was really stable. And that's what this is. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on as the desk part of this video. I also have a bunch of iPad gadgets like this guy right here that I want to feature in a desk setup. Now this thing for a couple of different reasons doesn't work on my desk. So that's why I kind of came up with the idea of doing this conceptual like how far can we push the iPad desk setup video. I also wanted to show, you know, features in iPad OS 16, like stage manager, external monitor support, reference mode, and show how they work really well in a desk setup. All right, so let's go ahead and build the desk and get everything set up. This is the FlexiSpot E7, the best choice for creating a work from home desk setup with a really nice standing desk. The E7 is incredibly stable. It moves smoothly, so that way when you're raising your desk up, you don't have to worry about your monitors or other devices falling over. And it's incredibly quiet as well. It's also wobble free, so that means when you're banging away on your keyboard, the whole desk isn't wobbling or shaking because it's unsteady. The E7 desk is powered by two dual motors. That means it's incredibly powerful and it can hold up to 355 pounds, which means you can ride the desk up if you really, really want to. The E7 is also made to last for a really long time. So the desk piece is a solid one piece. There's no cuts. It's not cut up into two different pieces. There's no holes in it. So just looking at it, it's really aesthetically pleasing. Like it's really nice to look at. And they have a bunch of different finishes for the tops as well. The E7 has an incredible range. So it can go from 22.8 inches to 48.4 inches. The FlexiSpot E7 even has its own cable management system for all the kind of like the cables and motors and everything that's kind of built into a standing desk. So that way, like all those extra cables aren't just dangling underneath your desk. The E7's control panel is really awesome. It has four different programmable memories, a sit and stand position along with a one and two mode that you can program for any height that you want. There's also a USB port on the side so you, you can charge up your devices. The E7 is an incredibly well-built desk. I'm very impressed with it. So I'll be sure to put a link in the description below to where you can pick one up. This is my concept for the iPad maximalist desk setup. Let's start with the iPad that I'm using. So I'm using a 2021 M1 iPad Pro with two terabytes of storage. I went with two terabytes because at the time of ordering it, I was editing all my videos on the iPad, but it's still really nice to have all that extra storage and RAM. The iPad is connected to the ZL Visa iPad stand. This uses the magnets on a modern iPad to connect it. It's incredibly strong and I have no concerns about the iPad falling off. What's great about this, as opposed to other iPad stands, is I can connect it to any Visa stand. This means it's a lot more flexible than others to adjust. 
I can raise it up to be eye level or even rotate it if I want the iPad to be in portrait mode. The Visa stand I'm using isn't anything special, just one I found on Amazon. I like the design of this one compared to some of the others. It's just a black bar coming straight up, but then it has another bar coming out, and you can use this to adjust the position of your screen, or in this case, an iPad. Any normal Visa stand will work with the ZL iPad mount though. I have the iPad plugged into not one, but two Thunderbolt docks. This gives me the ultimate flexibility when plugging in devices. The main hub is the OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock. This has a ton of different port options, including three Thunderbolt ports, three USB-A 3.0 ports, Ethernet, headphone jack, SD card reader, and even a USB 2.0 port for the front for whatever reason. But on top of the dock, I also have the OWC Thunderbolt hub, and I actually turned this around so that the back of the hub is facing me. This way I have quick access to more Thunderbolt ports. I plug in a lot of different card readers, external drives, and miscellaneous devices. Having this extra device makes it really easy for me to plug things in without having to reach around the back or walk behind the desk. Especially helpful since my main desk setup is pushed up against the wall. The monitor I'm using is Apple's Studio Display. I did a full review of this already and I'll link to that in the description below, but I absolutely still love this monitor. It gives me retina resolution so everything is super sharp, it's really bright, and it has excellent color accuracy. Those are the three most important things for me in a monitor. It also has the benefit of having really good speakers for a computer monitor. Would these outperform my KRK studio monitors? No, but they're good enough for what I need. I'm not mixing music or anything high-end audio related. Besides, when I'm working at my desk, I'm usually wearing AirPods Max. While these are extremely costly headphones, they sound amazing and work terrific wirelessly, or even plugged in if I'm recording a podcast. The noise cancelling is great for shutting up my really loud neighbors. I keep my AirPods Max sitting on the Grove made headphone stand. Disclaimer though, they have sent me stuff for free in the past, but I've also purchased stuff from them and I honestly don't remember if I bought this stand or not. But the stand itself is beautiful, it works great at holding up the AirPods Max and you can even plug in your headphones while they sit on the stand. The desk mat that I'm using is also from Grove Made, though I know I purchased this one. It's dark gray and goes really well with the color scheme of the desk and the accessories that I use. And it's got this sort of felt material that feels really nice. It comes in all different sizes, but this one is the XL version and it fits specifically on this desk really nicely. The keyboard that I'm using is the newest addition to my ever growing keyboard collection. Yes, I know, I have a problem. This is the Mode 80, a really well designed and thought out keyboard. While this is definitely the most expensive keyboard I've ever purchased, it's completely customizable and I got exactly what I wanted out of it. It has a brass plate padded with extra foam for a good sound and use Duroc V2 stabilizers. This is also using the Kali Box White Owl version two switch. These are quickly becoming some of my favorite switches. The keycaps I'm using are from a series called QPBT Terminal. You guessed it, these are also some of my favorite keycaps. Though unfortunately, some of the printing on a couple of the caps are misaligned. Apparently this is a known issue with this printer. I put all of my current favorite keyboard parts into this keyboard to make it the end all be all keyboard, my, my favorite keyboard to go to, though I doubt this will be the last keyboard I build. The trackpad I'm using is the Apple Magic Trackpad, nothing too special about this. This is the mouse that just works best with the iPad. With the Magic Trackpad though, I'm able to trigger all of the gestures and shortcuts for the iPad. So I also have a second keyboard on my desk. This is the BN009 Macro Pad. This is a custom programmable keyboard that you can use for things like media controls or triggering key combinations. I customized this a bit, no surprise, with Calibox Navy switches. These were left over from my previous keyboard build. I also ordered some media keys and blank keys from WASD. This macro pad does ship with keycaps and switches so you don't have to do this, but I programmed this with the VIA app, which needs a Mac or a PC. 
So here I have full media controls with this keyboard on iPad OS and Mac OS. That's why I went ahead and got these custom media keys made. The other four buttons do something, but that's for another video. Next up is the Anchor 637 Magnetic Charging Station. Now, full disclosure, Anchor has sponsored some videos in the past, but I bought this myself. This is a charging station with just about every port you can need. On the front, there's a magnetic charger for the iPhones with MagSafe. And on the back, there are three AC outlets. I use these for charging camera batteries and other things. Then there is two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports, all of which are capable of fast charging. If you need a multi-purpose charger on your desk like me, this is it. It's so unbelievably good. Lastly, I have some stuff that makes my desk feel more human and not machinery. I highly recommend everyone put a real plant on their desk if they can. It makes your workspace feel so much nicer and feels alive. Then I have a desk lamp for providing warm light. Yes, RGB is fun, but it's so inauthentic. It's so... I, I don't know, I just don't care for it. This lamp has a Philips Hue bulb in it, so I can automate it with all of my other office lights. Finally, I have a candle. This is more for the winter, but it adds such a great atmosphere when I'm working long hours. Under the desk, I bolted on two cable management trays. This is just so I can make sure cables aren't dangling down, especially when the desk is in the standing position. It also gives the power bricks a place to sit. I also used some command strips and attached a surge protector to the bottom of the desk. I've been doing this with all of my desk setups lately. This way, I only have one cable coming down. It also has the benefit of when I add something to the desk, I don't have to undo a bundle of cables tied together. When the desk is in the standing position, it looks so much cleaner. All of this put together really shows how far the iPad has come. Back when I did my first desk setup around the iPad, there wasn't even mouse support, so I had to keep the iPad in front of me to tap on the screen. Center stage and external monitor support has been huge as well. This gives me windowing on the iPad so I can see multiple documents or pages at once. It makes it so much easier to work on scripts and big research projects, or even deal with my day-to-day -day admin tasks. And turning on reference mode for my iPad has been great as well. When I'm editing a photo, I can move my Lightroom window over and make sure the photo looks good in the correct color conditions. While my personal setup is more focused on video editing and production work, I'm definitely going to keep some of the experiments I tried with this setup. I really want to try and get this visa mount to work on my desk. Having the iPad at eye level makes it far more useful than having it down low on some stand. All right, so that's it for my iPad maximalist desk setup. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm gonna put links to everything I talked about in the description below, including the FlexiSpot desk. And my thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and kind of making this whole setup possible. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.